Welcome to lecture four of unit 11 here on reading weather maps and predicting weather and all that good stuff. This lecture is going to be a little different than some of the ones from the past. There's not a whole lot of stuff for you guys to necessarily fill out in the note packet. Although I will be doing quite a bit of talking, you might want to, you know, jot some stuff down that I'm talking about. And then hopefully at the end of this, I want to go over those isobar isotherm activities that we did in class a day or two ago. So, let's get started. I'm going to start off here on this page with a bunch of pictures, and you've seen a lot of these. You, you did a little bit of a an online web lab involving drawing some of them. And these are just looking at typical weather symbols. All right, big ones to make sure you know about. Definitely make sure you know high and low pressure. H is high pressure, L is low pressure. The high pressure brings fair skies. And L, the low pressure, typically brings cloud and precipitation. Know the different fronts or boundaries between air masses, cold, warm, occluded, and stationary. All right, know that cold fronts is cold air approaching warm air. Warm fronts is warm air approaching cold air. Occluded is we got cold air lifting up the warm air off the ground. And a stationary front is a boundary where there's no movement in the air. And then also on here are a bunch of those symbols that we see in weather station models. So kind of familiarize yourself with some of these different things. Um, notice in the weather ones the more symbols the heavier the precipitation. So rain is dots. The more dots, the more rain there is. Snow are little stars. The more dots, the more snow there is. All right, and then there's symbols for drizzle and fog and, and all that stuff as well. This right here, this is one of those weather station models. And the weather... We can see that we can see it on the last slide for the symbols. Temperature, usually Fahrenheit or Celsius. The dew point is the temperature at which condensation and possibly precipitation will form. The wind... will give you direction and the speed. All right, it depends on what direction it comes off the circle. You got the pressure on here. Remember for low numbers Add a 10 in front for high numbers. Add a 9. And then sometimes we can also see a pressure trend. And then sky cover, whether how, how filled that circle is tells you how much of the cloud or how much of the sky is covered with clouds. If it's full, the sky is completely covered with clouds, and that's overcast. If it's half full, it's partly cloudy. If it's mostly full, it's mostly cloudy. If it's about a quarter full, it's mostly sunny. And then if there's nothing, we have a clear day. Here is an example of a weather map. And what you can see in here, you can see high pressure areas and low pressure areas. These blue lines represent the isobars. 
and you can see the fronts. And the big thing to see here is most of the precipitation on this weather map is occurring around a front. Most of the clouds are also around those areas of low pressure. High areas of high pressure, especially right here, and this one here, at least out in front of it a little bit, high pressure tends to have clear skies. So, what you want to know, pay attention, the H's are, are nice for clear skies, L's for cloudy or rainy skies, and the fronts are showing you where rainstorms are, where severe weather is happening. Here, yet again, is another weather map. You can see those isobars. Here's an area of high pressure. Look inside that area. There's nothing really happening. It's nice and clear. Here are a couple areas of low pressure. Both low pressure areas have a lot of precipitation around them, like you would expect. And then along the fronts, or even just in front of some of the fronts, we see all the storms associated with the fronts. Now keep in mind... Weather moves left to right, or this way, moves this way. So right here, if you look at this map, there's a lot of rain covering parts of Ohio. As time moves on, this rain's going to move over, and it will eventually, probably about a day or so later, start raining on that western New York area. So you always want to look to the left to see what kind of weather is coming. All right, over here where Chicago is, that low pressure system is going to move in. It's going to get some more storms probably the next day, maybe the next two days, and then eventually it will hit this clear area. And that clear area is clear skies. We will be doing quite a bit of practicing on predicting weather in class the next few days. Alright, so that brings us to this isobar and isomap or isotherm activity. Big things to know here, isobars connect pressure. Alright, here's the map. We, I went in, I drew that line connecting the points of 1024 millibars. Same thing with the points of 1,020, and eventually I went in and filled in all the points of each of those different pressures on this map. I then labeled all of my points, so it's real nice. So what you should end up seeing is you have an area here where there are high numbers, you have an area here where there are low numbers. All right, doesn't get any higher than 1024, doesn't get any lower than 1008. So that high area gets an H, because that's where the highest pressure on this map was. Why do we have an H around 116 or 1016 or 1012? Well, those are not high. Those are in the middle of this map, so they don't get a high pressure mark. Over here, 1008 is my lowest pressure. I have a region circled with that, so I'm going to put a giant L to represent low pressure. And then, because I know that high pressure regions are associated with dry weather and sun, I'm going to fill in that high pressure area. Some of that area is going to be yellow. 
to represent high pressure area, clear skies and sun, and low pressures associated with rain, so around that L I'm going to put some rain. And that is the isobar activity. As time moves on, this high pressure is going to move to the right. The low pressure will kind of move itself to the seaboard and then off the screen. And eventually this whole part of the country here should get some nice, clear weather. Finally, the last thing to look at is the way the wind is moving. For high pressure, Um, for high pressure, the air is sinking. For low pressure, the air is rising. So, high pressure, we got air sinking, which means clouds are going away. And we end up with nice clear skies. Low pressure, we have air rising. And if you look at it right here, we have high pressure and low pressure moving parallel to each other. But separate, there's probably a front right in here. Separating this high pressure mass from this low pressure mass. The isotherm activity, the other page of that same activity, is looking at isotherms, which are lines of temperature. Therm for thermometer. Okay, kind of keep that in mind. In this one, we are going through and we are mapping out the different temperatures. And we might have to extrapolate the, a little bit and kind of add in temperatures that might not be there. So if it's 40 up here in Seattle and 40 here in Nevada... Well, somewhere in between, it had to be 40. If you look at the Idaho number and the Oregon number, between 50 and 30 degrees, you have to get to 40. So we plop that point in there. And then we drew a line of the 40 degrees into Texas. Now we're faced with a situation between 30 and 60. We'll lines. Finish those in. All right. And then we can draw them in for the 50s as well and kind of start to put everything in there. Notice how we don't have a whole lot of circles. That's okay. These are not always circles. And then in this case, we can take a look at the warm and cold air masses. The coldest air mass is the stuff in that circle of 20s. The warmest is the stuff down by that 90 degrees. And that kind of just sums up what um, isotherms look like. And then you can see really pretty colorful maps on the Weather Channel involving isotherms. It helps us predict what it's going to be like the next day. We do all the prediction. We do the prediction um, about not only the temperature, but how the weather is going to move and the pressure. And then we can release a map that color codes the different areas of different temperatures. And that is it. And, and the big things to keep in mind are that the weather's going to flow from the west to the east or from left to right on the picture screen. And uh, we'll have some practice predicting weather coming up. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And uh, I hope you have a good night.